Let me ask you to think about a relative in your life who bugs you. Why do they bug you? Perhaps it's your brother who always picks on your weakest areas and brings it to everyone's attention with his merciless teasing. Maybe it's your niece who treats her parents like dirt. Maybe it's your mother-in-law whom everyone else thinks is the greatest person in the world, but when you're around her, she's cold, she's critical, rejecting. She's convinced you're not good enough for her child. Nevertheless, you're stuck with this person. If you've ever watched the movie A Christmas Story, if you're like many people, perhaps one of the parts that you remember best is when Ralphie was triple dog dared to lick the frozen flagpole. Well, you know, he was triple dog dared, he had to do it, but the minute that he licked it, guess what happens? He's stuck. And the kids all gather around and they're looking at him and then the recess bell rings and everybody's going inside and Ralphie's going, hey, no, hey, no, hey, but he was stuck. Well, that's how it is often with difficult relatives. Christmas, weddings, funerals, they're gonna be there. And sometimes that means you're stuck living with a bitter person. And as we look at the book of Ruth in the Bible, we see an example of living with a difficult relative, Ruth and her bitter mother-in-law, Naomi. Now, you may remember that Naomi and her husband were Israelites who left Israel with their two sons during a famine and went to live in Moab. And while they were there, their two boys got married to two Moabite girls, and then all the men in the family died. Well, following that, Naomi decided to go back to her native country, and Ruth, her daughter-in-law, went with her. Now, let's jump into the story at the point where Naomi arrives back at her hometown and read Ruth chapter 1, verses 19 and 20. When they arrived in Bethlehem, the whole town was stirred because of them, and the women exclaimed, can this be Naomi? Don't call me Naomi, she told them. Call me Mara, because the Almighty has made my life very bitter. I went away full, but the Lord has brought me back empty. The Lord has, called, has afflicted me. The Almighty has brought misfortune upon me. Well, as you may know, the name Naomi means pleasant or lovely. And what she's saying is, don't call me pleasant. I don't have any intention of being pleasant. Call me bitter, Mara, because that's what I am. Now, imagine that you're Ruth and your mother-in-law is like Naomi and she has just said, I came back empty. You sacrificed to come back to the strange land. You've left your home, your family, all your friends, and now your mother-in-law has said, I came back empty. How might you be tempted to respond? Well, I can think of a lot of ways that I'd be tempted to respond and kindness isn't one of them. Yet that's how Ruth responded, with kindness. And when you live with a bitter person, the temptations not to be kind will be very powerful. So here's one crucial factor in living with a bitter person. Don't respond by sinning yourself. It's easy, isn't it, to react to bitter or nasty people, to respond to the brother who gives us a hard time with a few zingers of our own, to respond to the disrespectful niece by giving her the whole cold shoulder, to take vengeance on the mother-in-law by gossiping about her or putting subtle pressure on our husband not to visit or let the kids see her. And although in those situations we, not, we may not have been the initiator, we can pick it up and carry the ball really well. But we don't see Ruth doing that. We see her responding with kindness all throughout the book of Ruth. And in our session, we're going to talk more about what can help us with that, but I want to quickly mention one other response from the life of Ruth. Don't wash your hands of bitter people. God didn't wash his hands of us. Now let me give you some balance. That doesn't mean that you've got to take a tyrant into your home and let that person destroy your family. It doesn't mean you become a mouse, one who's manipulated, afraid to confront, and holds in anger. But it can't mean that you become sarcastic, hostile, irritated, self-righteous, have a you owe me attitude or self-pitying. And it can become easy to shut out those who are bitter from our lives. Yet in Ruth we see just the opposite. Listen to this very familiar passage from the book of Ruth. But Ruth replied, where you go I will go 
and where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people, and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if anything but death separates you and me." You know, that sounds to me like a determined commitment not to abandon her mother-in-law. Well, we're going to unpack this a lot more in our session on how to live with a bitter person, but let me close by asking you this. Do you think that Ruth ever imagined that God would reward her kindness by allowing her to be in the line of Christ? Do you think that Ruth had any idea that people would repeat her commitment to stay with her mother-in-law in wedding ceremonies down through the ages? Psalm 112, 6 says, a righteous man will be remembered forever. That's certainly been true for Ruth. Let it be true for you and me as well.